I've noticed that a lot of people are still buying lead acid or AGM batteries and one of the questions I often get is can't I use my car battery or my marine deep cycle battery or my AGM battery or whatever to extend the life of my power station and while the simple answer is sure you can with a lot of caution there's a better solution and so today I wanted to talk about lead versus LIFEPO4, which is lithium ferrous phosphate, and which one you should choose and why. Now some of the things we'll talk about is the life cycles, that's how many times you can drain and then recharge a battery, and at what amount of drainage you should or should not drain that battery to. Runtime comparisons, especially what I've experienced out at my off-grid cabin, because when I first built the cabin and put in my off-grid power, I was using flooded lead-acid batteries. In fact, I used six-volt golf cart batteries, and I ran on golf cart batteries from 2010 all the way till late 2013. The off-grid side of things translated to using LIFEPO4s with power stations. I'll talk about some of the challenges I faced with lead batteries as well as LIFEPO4s because there are some challenges there. So let's talk about the elephant in the room first, and that is weight. Lead acid batteries can weigh upwards of 80 pounds, whereas LIFEPO4 batteries weigh considerably less. In fact, a 12 volt, 100 amp hour LIFEPO4 battery can weigh somewhere around 23 to 25 or six pounds, depending on the size of the battery. Unless you wanna work out, LIFEPO4 wins all day long, folks. Flooded lead acid batteries are typically rated between 200 and 300 cycles at 50% discharge. That means that if you drain those batteries halfway down, you've got 200 to 300 cycles. Now that doesn't mean you can't get several years out of them. Absolutely you can. But when you compare that to LIFEPO4 batteries, when you've got at least grade A cells, they can get four to 5,000 fully drained cycles, meaning that you can drain them 100% four to 5,000 times before they drop to 80% of their original capacity. You're talking a decade or more. Every one of you has probably had to replace a car battery that was a manufacturer's battery within three to five years of buying the car. Well, that's typical life for a flooded lead acid battery or an AGM. They just don't last that long. If you were buying one, let's say at $200, and I'm just throwing numbers out there to give you an example, and it lasted five years, versus buying, say, a LIFEPO4 for $300 that lasted you 10 years. Well, clearly the LIFEPO4, though it required a little more money up front, was actually less expensive in the long run because it outlasts that lead battery by so much. At dollar for dollar, you're saving money with LIFEPO4s. Now, the next thing to consider is charging efficiency. Lead batteries typically only charge at about 80 to 85% efficiency, LIFEPO4 batteries are actually quite a bit more efficient and I've heard in that 90 to 95% range. So you're gaining about 10% efficiency overall with LIFEPO4s and that can make a difference in terms of if you're using a solar panel to charge up your batteries, you're gonna get more out of that solar panel in terms of actual power stored in your battery with LIFEPO4s than you will with lead. My first set of batteries at my cabin, I destroyed in about four years. It was a simple mistake that caused them to be destroyed. I was out there one winter and I had a pipe freeze up and I needed to thaw it out with some heat tape. So I set up the heat tape, hooked it up and got the pipe thawed out and it was pretty cold out there. And I failed to remember that I had left it on when I left the cabin. I left the inverter on, left that heat tape on and honestly, folks, this was so long ago, I can't tell you what happened and why I forgot, but I did. And when I returned to the cabin about a week later, my 12 volt battery bank was showing below nine volts. It was dead, completely dead. Well, that damages the batteries considerably and that can actually cut your cycle life in half or worse. I thought you better not ever do that again in the following winter, it happened again. This time, I was actually living at the cabin. I was using that heat tape intentionally with my system, leaving everything on, and I had my generator set up with an automatic generator start, but for some reason the generator did not start, 
and my batteries again drained all the way down to nine volts. By that summer, I could not get those batteries to hold overnight very well at all. They just lost their ability to hold a charge and I had to replace them. And it cost me about $1,200 to replace those. So four years of running those lead acid batteries, it cost me about $1,200 and I replaced them again. Now over the course of the next eight years, I worked as hard as I could to make sure I never drained those batteries more than 20 to 30%, which is kind of your optimum range for flooded lead acid batteries. And AGMs aren't much better, to be honest. And I managed to do it eight years before I finally had a, had a situation where something happened and I drained my batteries again, this time a 24 volt bank, which again showed nine volt, deader than a doornail. Now at that time I was running 12, 220 amp hour, six volt golf cart batteries, which gave me 660 amp hours of total battery reserve. But in truth, since you really shouldn't drain them more than 50%, that really meant I had 330 amp hours of reserve power. And because I was trying to keep that at about 25% so that I didn't kill my batteries and could get them to last maybe 10 years, that really means I only had about 165 amp hours total. $1,200 for 165 amp hours of usable power. Well, today, I could buy a 165 amp hour LifePo4 battery for probably $400 or something like that. That's a third of the price that would last me 10 years or more, and I could completely drain that battery all the way down and then charge it back up again because that's the way they're designed. I get told all the time, yeah, but buying a, a marine battery or AGMs is cheaper than LifePo 4s. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna look it up on Amazon. An Interstate 68 amp hour battery runs about $290 on Amazon. The Interstate 100 amp hour marine battery, which I hear people using marine batteries all the time, that one runs about $285. Even the Optima Yellow Top, which is an AGM, runs about $310. Well, guess what, folks? Life Po 4s, not that expensive. In fact, Lee Time has a Group 31 100 amp hour 12.8 volt battery that runs $242. But there's something else about Life Po 4 batteries that you might not realize, and that is, unlike lead and AGM batteries, they can do some crazy stuff like this. This, folks is a 12 volt, <laughs> 100 amp hour LifePo4 battery made by Lee Time. It's in a steel case. It has low temperature protection. It's got a 100 amp BMS. It's meant to be mounted in all kinds of different ways. I could mount it on my wall right here and make use of it. I could lay it flat and since it has a steel case, I could set a power station right on top of it, which is kind of convenient actually and then run it into the power station solar input port and give me an additional 1,280 watt hours of reserve power. It's made out of metal. So the likelihood of damaging this battery, pretty unlikely. And again, you can mount it in a number of different ways. I could take this battery and mount this up on a roof of something if I wanted to, or I could take it and mount it on the side of my Jeep on the inside on the firewall so that it's completely out of my way and it'd be perfectly okay for me to run a suitcase or maybe a backpack or whatever I wanted up against it and it wouldn't hurt it. And you know how much this one costs right now on Amazon? It's $436. So let's talk about that. If you were to buy this battery, $436, so it's not exactly the cheapest LifePo4 battery out there, but, but it has lead time's good name. So you look at this at $436 and you say, yeah, but Eric, that's a lot more expensive. I mean, the closest price in a battery is that Optima Yellow Top at about 310 bucks. So I could save $136 buying that Optima than buying this metal Lee Time. And I would say, yeah. And in five years, when that Optima is dead and not working for you anymore, you're gonna wish you'd paid a little bit more and bought that LifePo4 battery that is gonna continue for several years to go. So I hope that helps somebody out. I hope that answers some of the questions I've seen posted on many of my videos, and I hope that prevents you from, well, spending more money than you really should trying to keep your power station or your off-grid cabin running. Let me know what you think. Drop some comments down below. Let me know how long you've been running LifePo4 batteries. And if you're a staunch believer in letter AGM, drop a comment down below and let me know why you still run those when you could spend less, run longer, 
and have a much better life. I want to thank all my members for being here and supporting the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome, so thank you very much for that. Meanwhile, folks, I'm going to throw another video right up over here for you to check out. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.